Hello students and welcome to this lecture on traditional and ABC costing. As always, I like to start with a quote of inspiration. This one is by Winston Churchill and he said, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. I really like this quote because it reminds us that true success lies in never ever giving up on your dreams. The learning outcomes for this study unit is that you need to be able to apply and evaluate the traditional costing method and you also need to be able to apply and evaluate the ABC costing method. As an introduction, I just want to share with you the bigger picture of where we are currently at in our syllabi. So we have determined in our first lecture that there are three components that are very, very important when we uh, apply cost and management accounting. So cost and management accounting is mostly about circumstances where a business uh, takes initiative to produce its own inventory and after it's been produced it will be sold and distributed to the customer. In order to do this we require direct material, direct labor and manufacturing overheads. In our current um, Celebi, we've already covered in terms of direct material our valuation, where you studied the FIFO and the weighted average method of valuation when your inventory is counted from the warehouse to be distributed to the customer, or when a new stock arrives from the supplier. Then we've also studied the material purchases budget because, of course, in order for you to value uh, materials and have it in your warehouse, you need to plan and buy it. Then we have studied direct labor. In direct labor, you have looked at wage calculations because laborers do not work for free. They expect, of course, some kind of salary or wage and it needs to be calculated in a certain way. So you have already studied the way that wages are uh, calculated and how they are basically sequenced, how the calculation is sequenced. Then we have done last week, we did the direct labor budget where we calculated the or we planned for direct labor and how much it should cost us in future if we want to maintain labor uh, to produce a specific product for sale. Then we are today studying manufacturing overheads or they are sometimes only referred to as overheads. And we have already in the past studied the mixed overheads where we had to split them. Here we said that overheads can either be variable, they can be fixed, or they can be mixed. And we specifically studied a mathematical method known as the HILO method, where we learned how to split a mixed overhead, which has both a variable and a fixed component. For today's lecture, we are going to look at overhead allocation. So overhead allocation basically means how do we divide overheads among different products or different departments. A quick overview just to remind you again, what are overheads? The term overheads or also manufacturing overheads refer to all the indirect costs that are incurred specifically and exclusively within your cost objective. So a cost objective, for example, would be to produce tables, to produce calculators. That is a cost objective. These costs are incurred as part of the production process, but they are not classified as directly attributable to the product that is as it is in its complete form. Examples of overheads may be your rental that you pay, water and electricity, repair costs, indirect staff such as security guards, supervisors, cleaners, and indirect materials such as packaging. It is important, again, I, I just want to bring this under your attention in the red, please do not confuse marketing, advertising, admin, and selling costs with manufacturing overheads. These are 
administrative and distributive costs, and they are not related to the production process. So therefore, they are not included uh, in the definition of a manufacturing overhead. So let's talk about the concept of overhead allocation and, and why it is important. So in order for you to understand why we do this calculation, or why these calculations are required, you need to, to understand how it relates to the context of practice, if you were to practice as a management accountant. How it works in practice is that when a product is produced, or a department is, is run where a specific pr product is produced, then we have a situation where 99% of the time, the managers of those departments or the, the person who is responsible for the production of that pro pro product is uh, held responsible for cost management. So it is simple to understand that in a business, we don't generally have unlimited resources. We have restrictions in the money that we can spend, and these restrictions are set out by the budgets that we set up um, in prior years before the actual term comes into play. So these managers of these departments or product lines are responsible for making sure that all costs are within the budget or that it is lower than the budget. If it should exceed the budget, if costs within that department or product line exceed the budget, then that manager will be in so-called trouble. And this will also affect this person's potential to earn bonuses. Normally, they have balanced scorecards. And an important factor within a balanced scorecard is that all costs need to be within the budget or under the budget. And if the manager manages his product line or department within that budget, um, he will be able to get a bonus of some sort for having managed the costs effectively. This causes trouble when we get to uh, overheads. If you think about overheads, overheads are mostly joint accounts. Uh, for example, you will receive a, a rent account for the month and you have to pay, let's say 50,000 Rand rent. Yet you don't receive a rent account that says, for department A, this is the rent. For department B, this is the rent. No, you rent the whole building as a whole and the rent is paid as a whole. So it is not clear which part of the rent is attributable to department A or to do department B, to product line one, to product line two. This also similarly happens if you have a water and electricity account. The water and electricity account is received um, for the property as a whole. The, the municipality will not indicate to you that this department used so much water and this department used so much electricity. This, because this happens and you receive an account as a whole, an overhead account as, as a whole, it is a breeding ground for conflict among managers. Because if I manage a certain department and my performance bonus is determined by my ability to manage the costs, it's important for me to know that there isn't too very many overheads that are allocated to my department um, unnecessarily. Because if they just put the whole electricity bill to one department, that poor manager will look very incompetent. It will seem like he did not manage the costs well, because overheads can contribute to a large amount within final or total costs. So it will seem like that person was unable to manage the costs thoroughly. And because of this, we want to find a method um, which is called overhead allocation. So overhead division among product lines or departments that is basically considered as fair towards that department or product line. In terms of mathematics, they have identified two ways to do this overhead division or overhead allocation. 
it is called traditional costing and ABC costing. So ABC is an abbreviation and it stands for activity-based costing. So I just want to add that activity-based costing. That is what ABC stands for. So there's two methods to divide overheads to departments or product lines. And this is a mathematical solution that is applied, and it allocates overheads to products and departments based on predetermined cost drivers. Again, a cost driver is in some kind of activity that causes an overhead to rise and fall. And machine hours would be a good cost driver for electricity bills, for example. The hours that the cleaner works would be a good cost driver for her wage. Um, so we have spoken about cost drivers in the past when we discussed the HILO method. And you will see when it comes to overheads, uh, cost drivers and the identification of cost drivers are always very popular. So this overhead allocation method, or these two methods, the traditional and activity-based costing, solves the dilemma of which department or product will carry the most overheads. If the product or department holds the highest rating of that specific cost driver, the most overheads will be allocated to, to that department or product line. So it's a mathematical fair way to decide how overheads are allocated to a specific product line or department. Please take note that ABC costing and traditional costing only applies to overheads. You cannot use traditional and activity-based costing mathematics to allocate direct material and direct labor to a product or a department. It is only an overhead mathematical solution. It does not apply to direct costs. In the next slide, I have uh, made a summary in terms of the differences between traditional and activity-based costing. As I go through this, this may seem very foreign to you, as you have not done these calculations before, but I have put a practical example on the set of slides as well, so you will be able to see um, mathematically how the difference is calculated. So for traditional costing, there is a single cost driver and the word single is very important. A single cost driver means only one. When you are single, you are alone. It is only you. So it is a single cost driver that is identified and all the overheads are allocated uh, based on this identified, this one cost driver. So it is said that this method is simple to apply, but it is often argued that its allocation is not very accurate. Suppose that machine hours is used as the only cost driver to allocate overheads to a product line or a department. Overheads that are completely unrelated to, uh, to this cost driver, such as quality checks, will also be allocated to the department or product based on this cost driver. Do you see that the cost driver and the overhead is not related? Yet, they say this is a simple way of doing it, and many small businesses opt to only choose this a single cost driver uh, in order to allocate their overheads. In this cost formula, it is said that the overhead rate is the total sum of all the overheads divided by the total sum of the single cost driver. In terms of activity-based costing, it means that we identify a overhead, uh, a cost driver for each type of overhead, I beg your pardon. So the calculation is slightly more complex but the allocation of the overhead is considered to be accurate for each overhead is allocated upon each, its own cost driver that is relevant to that specific overhead. The cost formula there is that the overhead rate is calculated by taking the specific overhead divided by the total 
of the specific cost driver. So again, it is sometimes very difficult to explain mathematical concepts in language or in words, and I don't think that I am particularly prolific in, in language. So I have set up a practical example for you in order to shed light on the difference between these two overhead allocation methods. So in the first, uh, in this example, I said, suppose that VUT bakers incur the following overheads to produce two products. It has a red velvet cupcake and a death by chocolate cupcake. All right, so we make two cupcakes. So it is important to know that in questions like this, you will always work with two products. You will always have two products or two departments because if there is just one product produced or there is just one department, then automatically all the overheads need to be absorbed by that single um, department so or product so there will always be one or uh, more than one product or department so in this instance we are VUT bakers and we bake two types of cupcakes red velvet and death by chocolate now I have listed for you here in the first um, table I have listed to you uh, an example of three overheads that we can have a cost driver that goes with those overheads and the rand value of the overhead. So the electricity bill was 24,000 rand. The paper cupcake holders, so that would be our indirect material or packaging, it was a total of 3,600. And then we have some cleaning costs and someone needs to clean up afterwards after we've made a big mess in baking. And that was a total of 7,700 rand. Then I've also stated the cost driver. So again, the cost driver is the activity that causes that account or that type of overhead cost to increase. So the electricity, the cost driver there is the number of oven hours, the number of times the oven is used, right? So that makes sense. If I use the oven once, uh, the electricity bill will not be as high as when I use the um, the oven, let's say, for example, 500 times. Then we have paper cupcake holders. The cost driver there is the number of cupcakes that we bake. So the more the cupcakes, the more paper holders, which is those little paper holders, in which is uh, the, it's baked, the cupcake is baked inside that holder. So the more cupcakes we bake, the more paper holders will be required. And then we also have cleaning costs. So that would be the hours worked by the cleaner. So if more hours are worked by the cleaner, we will have a situation where um, we will have to pay her more. If she only comes and works on Wednesdays, we will pay her lesser than if she comes in every single day, Monday through to Friday, for example. So we have identified some cost drivers and they do make sense to me if I think about it. In the next table, I have given you also the totals um, of, of the... Uh, cost drivers. So I have divided the cost drivers to tell you. So so many of the oven times were for the red velvet cupcakes. Well, so many of the oven times were for the death by chocolate cupcakes. So you need to understand which uh, or how much of the cost driver goes to which product. Something that you will have to add in these questions, which is very important and it's often not given, um, is that you need to be able you need to be able to add up the cost drivers. So I just want to show you. You've seen that I did not type a total column here, and I did that on purpose. Because you need to know that when I give you the, the, the cost driver divisions, you need to add them to get to a total. So if I look at the number of times that the oven is used, I'm going to say it's 150 plus 90. So the total is four, uh, 240 times. 
Then the number of cupcakes baked, you will see we baked for red velvet 1,800 and we baked for death by chocolate 1,080. So the total cupcakes that were baked was 2,880 cupcakes. Again, this is not given to you. You need to go and add up the cost driver. Then in the final part, um, the hours worked. The cleaner worked 100 hours to bake uh, when we baked the red velvet cupcakes and she worked 120 hours when we baked the death by chocolate cupcakes. So there was 220 hours in total that she worked for. Right, let's move on to the solution. So let's suppose that traditional costing is applied. So again, there's two methods. We can do traditional costing or we can do ABC costing. So I normally tell you in number one or in number A that traditional costing is applied. Please do the calculation. And then I tell you that um, ABC costing is applied in B or number two. And then you have to do that calculation. So in the first practical example, the required part asks you, suppose that traditional costing is applied and the number of cupcakes baked is the cost allocation basis or the cost driver. So we are doing traditional costing and the we will use a single cost driver and that single cost driver is the number of cupcakes baked. So here I am going to again apply the formula. It is the total sum of the overheads divided by the total sum of the cost driver. So now I need to go back to my calculations and see what was the total overheads. And they've given me the total overheads by adding all of these together. The total overheads in red was 35,300 rand. Then the cost driver they want me to use is the number of cupcakes and that was 2880 cupcakes in total so i'm going to take the total of all the overheads in rand divided by the total of the predetermined cost driver so i need to tell you it is traditional costing so i need to tell you the method and i need to tell you the cost driver in traditional costing and the cost driver here was the number of cupcakes so that was 2880 so i took the 35300 total overheads and i divided it by the sum of the 1800 so again I basically divided it then by 2,800. I divided it by 2,880 because 1,800 plus 1,080 gives you 2,880. Once we do that calculation and we divide it, we get to 12 rand 26 per cupcake. So that is the now the predetermined rate or the traditional costing overhead rate that we have calculated. So this is step one. Step one is to take the total overheads and divide it by the total of the cost driver that was identified. We get to 12 rand 26. I've rounded to two decimals. Um, of course, you will have instructions in your test situations, or I will just find a calculation that has proper division so that you don't have to um, type commas. All right, then in step two, we are now do a calculation to see because our final answer needs to tell management how much of the overheads will go to one product and how much of the overheads will go to the other product. So after calculating this rate, we take this rate and we multiply it by the cost driver, the, the predetermined or the mentioned cost driver of that uh, product. So if we go back to our question, the red velvet cupcakes, we're going to multiply by 1,800 cupcakes because that is the number of cupcakes specifically for that product. And for the death by chocolate, we're going to multiply by 1,080 because that is the number of cupcakes specifically for that product because now we want to indicate the specific allocation of overheads to that product. 
So I take the 12 rand 26 I've calculated here. I times it by the 1,800 red velvet cupcakes and I get the total overheads that will be allocated to product red velvet cupcakes is 22,068 rand. For death by chocolate, I again use this rate, 12 rand 26. I multiply by the 1,080, which is the specific number of cupcakes for death by chocolate. So for the second product, you will find that for death by chocolate, 13,242 rand will be allocated to that product. Righto. So this is one method of doing it, traditional costing. But now I can give you the same information, but I can ask you to rather apply activity-based costing. So activity-based costing is done in a specific format. Again, this is the template that you should use. You, you list your overheads, you list your calculation of the, your rate, uh, you list product one or department one and product two or department number two. I am going to post that template to Gutella so that you are able to use it as you do your calculations. So for activity-based costing, the cost formula is that you take the specific overhead and you divide it by the cost driver uh, of that specific overhead. So now you will see, instead of doing one big calculation as in traditional costing, we do a calculation for every overhead that is given to us. Okie dokie. So I am going to now show you how I got to this answer. So I took my overheads and I listed them. So you can clearly see from the question, electricity, paper cup holders, and the cleaning costs were the overheads. Now I need to go and calculate my allocation rate. And in calculating my allocation rate, I need to basically, I just want to insert a shape here. I need to use that formula to calculate my allocation rate. I need to take the specific overheads in RAND, and this will be in RAND, just as a side note, in RAND, and I need to divide it by the total of the specific cost driver. So if I look at my electricity bill, the total electricity bill was 24,000 red. And the number of times the oven is used is the cost driver. So I have calculated the total for it. It's 240 times. So in calculating this rate, I will do a calculation specifically for electricity, specifically for paper cupcake holders, and specifically for cleaning costs. So I take the 24,000 and I divide it by the 150 plus 90. And that is basically the 240. 40 that I've calculated there. So I basically divide by 240, which is the total of that specific cost driver. So I take the specific cost and the specific co um, cost driver, and I get to 100 rand. So once I have the rate, I need to take that 100 rand and I put it under the two products. But now I need to multiply by that specific cost driver for that specific product. If I go back and I look at the times that the oven is used, it's 150 times for the red velvet cupcakes and 90 times for the death by chocolate cupcakes. So I multiply for red velvet by 150 and I multiply the death by chocolate by 90. So I take the rate that I've calculated in my second column and I times it by the cost driver for that specific product that I am calculating. For the paper cup holders, we are going to repeat this pattern. So I am going to...
go and find the specific rand value for paper cupcake holders, which is 3,600. And I'm going to look for the total of the specific cost driver. The specific cost driver to the overhead was the number of cupcakes baked. So if I look at the number of cupcakes baked, I calculated for myself that was 2,880 cupcakes. In other words, I took the 3,600 and basically I, calcul I calculated it by dividing it by the 2,880, which is the total of that specific cost driver. And the rate was 1 Rand 25. I copy and paste and I put the 1 Rand 25 under each product that I am calculating. And then I multiply by the, co by the cost driver for that specific product. So it is 1,800 cupcakes for red velvet, 1,080 for death white chocolate. And there you can see I have, do, I have done that multiplication and I have got to a total of 2,250 for red velvet and 1,350 bar for the death white chocolate. The last type of overhead that we were calculating was the cleaning cost. Again, I'm going to take that specific cleaning cost total in rand and I'm going to divide it by the total of the specific cost driver that applies to the overhead. It was 7,700 rand. The specific cost driver was the hours that the cleaner worked and the total of the hours was 220. It was 100 plus 120 which gave us 220. So I went back and I divided the 7,700 rand by 220. And that gave me 35 rand. I copy and paste the rate, the 35 rand under each product. And now I go and times it by the, the same specific cost driver, but the, only the part that relates to the product. So you will see that it was 100 hours for red velvet and it was 120 for death by chocolate. So I multiplied it as such and I got to 3,500 rand and 4,200 rand respectively. Thereafter, I added up all the totals for red velvet. So the 15,000 plus the 2,250 plus the 3,500 gave me a total of 20,750. So 20,750 rand of the total overhead should be allocated to product red velvet. And then I also added the 9,000 plus the 1,350 plus the 4,200. And that meant that a total of 14,550 50 rand of the overheads are allocated to product death by chocolate. All right, quite interesting. I hope that you have enjoyed this lecture. Um, again, the, the two different methods, once you apply the mathematics correctly, it's really not difficult to understand. It is just important for you to go and practice these concepts as many times as possible. So I will also be uh, sharing with you a specific question relating to ABC costing to show you what a typical question in the test or exam would look like um, for you to do that specific calculation as well. So please also look at the explanatory videos to follow uh, for uh, specific test questions. All right, have a great day.